Good morning! <laughs> My name is Jana. You're watching Finnish Knitting Stories, episode 61. Today is Friday and I'm coming to you from my craft room, from my little corner here in southern Finland, where I talk about crafting, knitting, crochet, sometimes spinning and other crafts as well, whatever I'm up to this week. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's begin! You can find me on Instagram as Kettenitz and on Ravelry as Kettenitz and on many different places, either as Kettenitz or Finnish Knitting Stories. I'm on Patreon, I'm on Coffee, I'm on... Yeah, we have a Ravelry group. I think that's pretty much it. And I will link everything in the description box down below. Thank you for, for being here with me. Well, warm welcome or welcome back. Um... It's very early morning. I hope my brain <laughs> kicks in. Okay, it's not very early. I've been up for almost three hours already. But it's a bit past eight on this beautiful Friday morning. You can see light is very bright. And I'm recording now in an unusual time uh, because I, I won't be here in the afternoon. So I decided to use a moment before I head out to work and record now. <laughs> um, yes. How have you been? What have you been working on? I have not knit much this past week. And now I noticed I have my first finished object on a chair there. <laughs> okay, let's dive into finished objects and very smooth transition. I'll, I'll go grab it. <laughs> uh, yeah, morning, morning. My brain is still fuzzy. <laughs> okay, I have not been knitting much. I've been mostly trying to work on my existing whips and trying to finish things and yeah, so this thing, this thing, I got it ready. Um, you have seen it probably a couple of times. I haven't shown it too much, but Inclinations Cowl by Andrea Maury and I knit mine in creme cam, in the mood, yeah, in these colors that to look like they are hand spun, but they are not. <laughs> it's a commercial yarn, but it's it's it was a very fun project. It's a cowl that you seam in the back, you knit knit it flat and then you seam it, you block it and then you seam it, and mine looks like this. I used all the crazy colors <laughs> randomly. I think I used four different colors for this cowl. Um in no particular order, just... <laughs> yeah, I started with... They came in... The yarn came in 50 gram skeins. So I just took two random ones and started working on it. And then when one of them was halfway, I switched that to the next color that, there would, that they would overlay. Yeah, that, that both colors wouldn't end at the same time. And here we are. And I think I used just a bit over four skeins, less than five. So this thing weighs less than 250 grams. I have somewhere written the exact weight, but somewhere on my table. <laughs> okay, yeah, and I don't know, do I put it on? I have not even, I don't think I have tried it on. Yeah, here is this triangle and yeah. I did not get the gauge, but that happens very often, so I just knit it to the measurements. The pattern is very good. It gives you a schematic with the measurements. It tells you how many centimeters or inches. So I just adjusted my stitch count because I had a different gauge and different yarn than in the pattern. But uh, the finished object is in the same measurements. I had actually less stitches. I needed less stitches. Yeah, but this is fun. I think this is fun. Yeah, for now it will go live in my shop as a sample and then maybe I'll get to wear it next autumn <laughs> when I don't need it as a sample anymore. Or maybe I still do. I don't know. Um, yeah, fun. Okay, I'll show you the color transitions once again. They are absolutely random. I did not adjust anything. Yeah, this stripe does not look as bright in real life. It looks way brighter on camera but there is no such a harsh contrast when when you look at it in real life and the back is mostly blues and greens but 
just a fun little project that I finally finished. I started it last last year, I think. And it was in my whip pile. And now it's done. Um, so, my next finished object is not here. Because Sophia is wearing it right now. She has been wearing it almost whole week when it dried. I finished her stripey sweater. But I will insert a video or... Or a picture, I don't know. Something something will be inserted here that you can see it. She likes it very much. Um, I think the fit is good. I did not want anything too long. And it's, it's just great for now. Just a very simple, quick knit with using my old deep stash. <laughs> old deep stash yarn. Yeah. So that was my second finished object. And I have one more. I have one more, and if you follow me on Instagram, you have probably seen it already ready. Uh, it was a whip last week. It's Franny the Frog. <laughs> Franny the Frog has all her legs now. <laughs> and I will show you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's a superstar now. She's a superstar on my Instagram. She's very fashionable frog. <laughs> How do... I'm trying to show you the, the dress as well. Yeah, Franny has her own wardrobe and her little shoes and her little knitting corner in our living room. <laughs> I, She picked this dress today and, and little shoes. <laughs> yeah, Barbie and Bly's doll's shoes fit Franny perfectly. <laughs> uh, we, we have a bunch. <laughs> We have boots for, for when she's going to go outside. She just needs a raincoat, maybe. Wondering, oh, she could borrow that from the from the foxy. Mr. Fox is now also. Mr. Fox has been feeling spring and yeah, keeping his ears warm. And <laughs> um, yeah, he, he likes colors. He's not afraid of colors. So <laughs> um he was walking in the forest. That's why he has a little rain jacket and a hat. I think Franny could borrow that coat. So, yeah. So here is Franny, the fabulous frog. Uh, she uh, She's the pattern by Claire Garland, Dot Pebbles, and it's just called Frog on Ravelry. And she was uh, such a cute and fun knit. She was very quick and easy to make. I think I thought it would be harder to make her, but it was a bit fiddly with the legs and arms, but I just used uh, DPNs, double-pointed needles, to do that, and it was actually fine. Yeah, I thought I thought it would be harder. <laughs> um, yeah. I love her little legs. Her legs are <laughs> my favorite. It. There is a little frog knee there. Look at that. She has little frog knees and elbows as well. Just, I just love her so much. Uh, and then she has this little chair. <laughs> she will sit in my lap. Um, she has this little chair. The chair also has a story. This chair is from my childhood. I have a set. There are two chairs and a table. They were in the Sophia's room. But now Franny has one. We took it away from Sophia's Barbie dolls. <laughs> we borrowed it. Yeah. There is a sticker I added there as a kid. It's not a sticker. It's a transfer picture. You know, the one you needed to dip in water and then slide it on. <laughs> I did that as a child. And this set... Um, my grandpa bought it to me when I was, I want to say, about three. So this is very old. This is, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is like 35 years old furniture set. And I don't know, it's just a precious memory. And now my, my, my Franny will have this one little chair. Sophia has the rest of the furniture. I also have a big closet and a couple of other items in the sofa something else. Yeah, it was a set. And I made her a little blankie with the leftovers of sock yarn. Uh, if this looks familiar, yeah, I have a pair of socks like that. I knit it, I think, not sure, last year or one before. It was just Novita Nalle, some of their, some of their, oh, I think, autumn collection. I don't remember the name, but I just need her, yeah, a little blankie to cover the chair that she would be all cozy. Then I made her a little cushion just 
with some cotton fabric that I had in my stash. Um, we have more. I could make her a dress in that as well. <laughs> and yeah, here she is. That's her little chair. And she usually sits somewhere next to me where I'm knitting. Yes. And I want to tell you, you're never too old to play. Definitely. Believe me, it doesn't matter if you're, I don't know, 5, 15, I don't know, 35 or 85. It doesn't really matter. If you want to play, just just play. Yeah, nobody can define what what is fun to you. Like some people go out and I stay in and play with my frog. <laughs> it's just my kind of fun. And if people are judging me, it's their problem, not mine. <laughs> Um, and there is her little knitting basket. <laughs> she has a knitting basket. She has some yarn there. There is a teeny tiny skein of yarn. <laughs> yeah, there is a yarn skein and then a couple of balls. She's knitting from one. There. There is her little knitting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so Franny is living her best life. <laughs> uh, life goals, live like Franny. Be like Franny. She takes it easy. She enjoys her afternoon teas. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, she lives her absolute best life. I love Franny. Don't we all want to be like Franny? Take it easy and <laughs> chill with our knitting. Uh yeah, I might take her with me on, on adventures sometimes outside of the house as well when it gets a bit warmer. Franny doesn't have winter coat. She has boots but no coat. And maybe some knits could keep her warm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's enough about the frogs. Should we talk about, about my whips? <laughs> um, I just want to talk about frogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we have a make along going when frogs oink mouth. You can make piggies or froggies, and bonus points if you can tell me what else pigs and frogs have in common except their love for puddles. Bonus points for that. <laughs> um, yes, okay. Whips, whips, let's go to whips. I have a blanket. I have a blanket progress. I have added. Where is my progress keeper there it is one two three four six six colors in in a week that's okay so today i will add one more that makes it seven so one one stripe stripe zigzag chevron whatever that is <laughs> what of <laughs> one of those a day was my target and i missed a couple of days but then i caught up in the evening and we're all good so i was I was here last week and that much I added in one week, which is very, very good. And the stitch is called Granny Spike Stitch. I learned it on YouTube. I will link the tutorial down below in case you want to learn the same stitch. I have knit a granny stripe blanket before and I wanted to try something else. And one of my lovely viewers sent me a picture of her blankets and said that, oh, do you know this one? Like, this is a great, great one. And I thought, oh, <laughs> I need to learn that. And I did. And I'm using um, Novita Seitemann Veljesta leftovers here. Yeah, that kind of thicker sock yarn. It's like a DK or worsted. No, yeah, DK weight sock yarn. I have all sorts of bits and bobs here in this beautiful big bag that another lovely viewer sent me. I love it. I love it. And it's big enough to fit all my yarns and even a blanket. So, yeah, and the yarns will be getting smaller, blanket will be getting bigger, so this is still good. It's a wonderful size. I don't have too many big project bags. I have a few. I have a few, but usually blankets then live in my baskets because, because my project bags are not big enough. But that's that's fine as well. Um, next, <laughs> are we done with the blanket? Yes, we are. Uh, next is my my red dress by Vera Valimaki. There is a knit along going uh, on Instagram under hashtag MyRacal2023. I've knit one of these before. The pattern could be 
found in uh, Vera's book Stripes. That was published by Lina Publishing and yeah, <laughs> I found one of these. Aha, that's the thing that I put in, in, in Froggy's arms and legs, that kind of plastic. Ah, wait, <laughs> that kind of plastic tie. I don't know, something came tied with it, probably some electronics or I'm not sure. And her legs and arms are bendable and posable because I put these into the eye cord. It's just like a metal wire with some plastic coating. Yeah, I wanted to show you that last time, but I forgot. And now, now I had one here. <laughs> okay, in my Myra basket. Uh, so, <laughs> back to Myra, back to the dress. Um, I'm, I have knit one in a two tones of beige and it's lovely. I, I loved it. And now I decided to go wild and knit scrappy Myra from my stash. And that's what I'm doing here. And I will show you the progress of my Myra. Here are my yarns. Here's the big basket of all kinds of bits and bobs, mostly very bright ones. That's mothy and the squid. I have, what else? I have my own hand dyed yarn and some yarn by Rova Silmo Solmo and then some unidentified minis and ooh. I want to put this one in. Yeah, all kind of fun things. And okay, where is the front? Where is the front? Here is the front. That's the front. I think I should do the neck ribbing next because soon I need to determine the length of it. And most of the yarn is merino. There is one strand of sock wool, opal, black opal and fabel, uh, black opal and black drops fable. Um, and something else as well. I don't remember what's the third one. Could be Austerman or... No. Doesn't matter. Just some black sock yarn left over. So one strand is going through, throughout one fingering strand. And then the rest is merino, mostly. So I have done second scrappy stripe. And I'm already on my third black stripe. So it's now here. Look at that. Uh, but it's merino. It's probably going to grow a little bit when I block it. A little bit. I don't know. The sock yarn will hold it more or less in place. But still, there, there will be added length. So I need to estimate how long I want to knit it. I want it just below the knee, I think. My other one is a tad longer. But I think I knit till middle of the knee or just a bit below the knee and then I'll end it there. I'm wondering can I fit one more of the colorful stripes? Yeah, probably. Or will my bottom... the bottom will be colorful, the ribbing. I don't know. We will see when we get there, but I'm loving it. I love it so much. It is a bit heavy because of like three strands of merino, but I think... It's not that bad. I have heavier things in my wardrobe. I think it's gonna be all right. It's a dress. It needs to be warm as well, right? So here we are and I love it. I love it. I love it very, very much. You know, I'm all in for a scrappy project. Give me a good scrappy project and I'll, I'll make it happen. <laughs> um, yeah, that's my second whip. Uh, I have one more. I have one more and I'm going to work on it while we knit in chat. It's a Sophia's Musselberg. Lovely bag by Bertie and Puppet. <laughs> um, I know I sound like a broken record, but oh, I love them. <laughs> I love them. And there will be something in a happy mail related to Bertie and Puppet that I will show you very soon. <laughs> but okay. Um, Sophia's Musselboro hat by Isolde Teague. I'm on the pink. Was I on the pink last week? I think I was, wasn't I? Not much progress, but slowly, slowly. Yeah, I have not had much knitting time this last week. Just, yeah, a couple of evenings have been too tired to knit. I, was, I put Sophie to bed and then I went to bed myself because I was just so broken. Like last night, I think I knit one round on, on this and that was that was all my knitting last night. Uh, yeah, that one. 
that one and we will we will get to it you will see it more during our knitting chat okay i have some happy mail i have some no let's talk about what i'm wearing today what i'm wearing today almost forgot about that i know you always ask you always want to know so i will tell you now uh i'm wearing my snowy forest by knit cafe midori it was in a lighter magazine quite a while ago i don't remember the number but it was in a lighter magazine and it's probably already available as an individual download but yeah mine is knit in polworth sports weight polworth and a strand of silk mohair i have a bit shorter sleeves on it because i usually use it as a layering piece except today i have a short sleeve dress under <laughs> um and it's very unusual color to me it's blue i don't have many blue things in my wardrobe somehow lately i've been leaning towards more blue it's not my thing but i don't know i have this sweater and then i have this dress that is also blue and i think they they work very very well together and then i even i even lately have some blue earrings <laughs> i don't know what's happening with me and blue I've got the blues. <laughs> yeah, the dress is by Not Perfect Linen. <laughs> I know many of you have bought dresses from there after seeing mine, and that's great. It's absolutely the business we, we should support. They are lovely ladies. They are doing their best and working really hard. And yeah, if you're concerned that something is not going to fit, or maybe you need a shorter length, or maybe bigger bust size or something, they customize them for free for you no extra charge they will make the dress to your measurements and that's that's a lovely service yeah you can ask for shorter sleeves or longer sleeves or whatever you need basically or less volume and they they do their best to accommodate your needs and it's absolutely wonderful i've i'm very happy with everything i have from them they are not sponsoring me they <laughs> i have spent my own money and i love them so much that's why i talk about them yeah um yeah so that's the dress the earrings are by one of my favorite finnish designers and makers designed by kieto and these are lovely there is a coffee cup and uh and pulla <laughs> who doesn't love that and the cinnamon bun and yeah they make me happy and these are blue as well they got the pink ones out after these, but they already had these and there was no point of getting the pinky, no, minty ones. Yeah, that would have been my, my choice, but they came later. Yeah, I jumped on <laughs> on the wagon with these blue ones and now I have blue ones, but they, they work with this, so it's okay. And then in summer they will work with, I have a denim jacket with that as well, so it's okay. Uh, yeah, so that's my outfit today and happy mail happy mail i'm i've been spoiled with happy mail my whole family has been spoiled with happy mail should we start with the one right here <laughs> it's a bag by bertie and poppet but J it didn't come from jill <laughs> yeah jill sent it to me but one of you my lovely viewers i hope i can say your name avital from Isa israel she sent me this she bought me this bag and i hope you're watching this thank you very much and it's it's absolutely lovely it's it's a perfect choice for me i think i needed something yellow for spring Look, looks good with blue doesn't it and it has the cutest foxes and birdies and flowers and as always the lining is perfection and it's a drawstring bag i actually love these drawstring bags a lot because yeah it's a thicker one if you throw your needles in there they will not poke through all the bags are thick but you can see i love a drawstring bag because it's great for socks and hats and a lot of other little project like maybe something if anything outfits for franny <laughs> so this is a lovely bag i love I, I i love it very very much thank you avital and thank you jill and <sighs> lovely ladies <laughs> i've been spoiled i've been spoiled this week because that's one it's perfect right it's, I, I i would definitely choose this if i would if I would be shopping for a bag, I would definitely choose this pattern. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll hug it here and I'll talk. I want to hold it. 
I love I love my project bags. I have a lot of project bags. But they all get used. I try to rotate them. And sometimes I gift my project bags, the ones that don't get that much love when, yeah, when I'm do donating some yarn to a specific person, I, I also include a project bag for them sometimes. And Sophia has a few of my project bags that I want back, but she, she's not giving them back. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Yeah, she also has her own. She's, she has been spoiled as well. Okay, another, another lovely gift, uh, Lynn. Lynn from, from the UK sent me. Yeah, we've been chatting and it's... She sent the package for the whole family. Kids got books and hubby got the book. And kids got soft toys with the cutest knit sweaters. And everybody's over the moon. And like everybody enjoyed it so much. We all pinned it together yesterday in the living room. Yeah, it just arrived. And yeah, there were so many cute little things. Oh. I didn't show you the card that was with the previous package. There is a beautiful foxy card. That's from uh, Bertie and Poppet. And there were, there are always stitch markers with the bags. Yeah. And then there was a card because it was supposed to be a Christmas package, but there were problems with the mail. So it's, it's all right. <laughs> uh, this will go in my special card box. I, I keep all the cards. I have a keepsake box where I keep all my special cards. And then there were some lovely buttons. Sophia liked them very much. They would be a bit big if I make her a cardigan, but they could go on one of my cardigans. These are lovely. I love a good buttons. I have a button. I have a secret button stash as well. These are lovely. I don't think I have any yellow buttons in this specific color. So that's that's very good. That's very good. And then there was a little foxy. I don't know. Will you be able to see or is it is it glaring? Brooch, foxy brooch. And this one reminds me. I'll take I'll take it out of the bag. Crinkle, crinkle. That's very glittery and it actually, this one made me smile so much because it reminds me of a jewelry piece that my my grandma had and I actually have it. It's a brooch of a poodle with the same kind of crystals in it. I think it was made in Czech Republic somewhere in, I don't know, 50s, 60s. My grandma has had it forever and then, yeah... Not long before she passed away, I think about half of a year or yeah, she gave me a box with her costume jewelry, like all kind of uh, glass pearls and um, brooches that nobody else in the family actually were interested in. They were after like gold stuff that I don't care about. <laughs> Uh, and I, yeah, there were some amber uh, pieces. Some of them were broken and I still hope I can fix them. But yeah, there, there's that doggy. I'll insert a picture of that doggy. So you will, you will, it's in a similar style. And this made me smile because it, it just reminded me of something. It's not focusing, is it? It doesn't want to. Is it? I don't know. Is it focusing? Something that my grandma would wear. <laughs> and I love it. So that's lovely. Um, yeah, I'm only showing you the bits that I got. <laughs> I got yarn. I got yarn. Need to. It's lovely. I have heard of botanical yarns. I think I even follow them on, on Instagram. And it's a beautiful skein. Beautiful skin. I don't think I have ever had botanical yarn. Was it in the advent? Not sure. But anyway, I've never had a big skein from them. But yeah, it's called Dahlia Peaches. And it's perfect. It's a perfect color for me. I would definitely choose that. Sophia liked it as well. <laughs> I first thought, should I make myself a pair of socks? But I think I, I might save it just in case Sophia wants a hat next year. Or maybe I have a lot of hats. <laughs> um, it's lovely. I love it. Thank you, Lynn. It 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 
it was a wonderful gift for all of us. The kids loved it and hubby loved it. They were all into their books. You you chose very well. Like they were they were customized. <laughs> the choice was very customized to each each one of us and I'm happy with my things. And I've been spoiled. I'm telling you, I've been spoiled. Yeah. <sighs> Thank you, lovely ladies. I I had a bit rough week, but this, this made it so much better, like times better. So we're sliding into knitting chat. We're sliding into knitting chat. I'll pull this out. I noticed I should work on something bigger because I keep looking at this and not at you. And I want to, I mean, on something on thicker needles, because in the last episode I was looking down too much. That was not nice. Um, I apologize for that. Because I want to talk to you. I want to look at you. See? Now I'm looking down. Should I put it away? Okay. Uh, I'll try not to look down that much. Yeah, thin needles. I don't know. Very hard to... Much harder to knit blindly. I think I'm based at like around three and a half to four millimeters. Yeah, knitting and not looking. Uh, these are two and a halves. Um, yeah. So, what's new? Um, it was rather boring week overall because I just worked a lot. I worked a lot. I was preparing a lot of yarn for a yarn update and I have yarny events coming up later in spring and just working a lot. But I got new hair. <laughs> I finally got my hair done. I got enough. I wrote to my hairdresser a couple of weeks ago and she got me time for this week and one early morning I went there and I got my hair done. It was long overdue. <laughs> How do you like it? It's a bit different color. It's a bit different color, but that will rinse off. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm working with my grays here. <laughs> uh, yeah, we chopped a bit length and we, it got a bit of color. So I'm very happy with my new hair. I feel lighter. I feel like a human again <laughs> because I only I only do my hair about twice a year. Uh, yeah, it takes a lot of time, which I don't have, and it's rather expensive as well. So yeah, but it was long overdue. <laughs> now I, I feel nice again. <laughs> I feel like pretty, pretty girl. <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah. Don't you feel good when you get your hair cut or, yeah, anything? I, I love that. I don't do that often enough, I think. Yeah, would be nice to do it more often, but... Oh, well. At least now, now, now it feels nice. Yes. Um, what else? I wanted to talk about dream knitting because spring is coming summer is coming i've been thinking what do i want to knit for summer i actually knit quite a few summer tops last year so technically i'm covered i i don't know do i need more but i know i will knit more i definitely want to knit more may you may you copy may you knit is currently testing a top using my yarn it's lovely and i really want to knit that it's knit in my merino silk and it has some lace going on and it's 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 beautiful. I think I want to knit that. Um, the pattern is not out yet, but it's in, it, it's in test knitting. Um, then there are a couple of patterns that I want to knit by James Watts. Um, yeah, a couple of summer tops are on my list. <laughs> they have been, and I think I even have yarn for them. One is the Sun Gazer with, um, knit with Noro yarn. And I have some Noro yarn. I just need to check how much it requires. Yeah, do I have enough? Or maybe I can always combine different colors, right? And the other one is the, um, look at my holes. Yeah, is that? That's the pattern name. The one with the holes, I want to knit that as a layering piece over the dresses. I think it would be great. And I wanted to knit it last year, but I, I did not have time. I did not manage. So I think I even bought the pattern and I have yarn for it. 
yeah <laughs> so that would be easy and then I had a dream I had a dream a couple of nights ago about a cardigan that I want it was very unusual. Do you ever dream about knits? Turns out I do. I dreamed of a cardigan. <laughs> Don't laugh when I tell you what kind of cardigan I want to make. It's actually not knit, it's crochet. And the one I saw, it was a dream. I was walking on a street, looking in the shop windows, and I came to the store. Uh, it was closed. The store was closed. The cardigan was in the window. And it was this colorful crochet granny square cardigan in mohair. <laughs> and the price tag was something insane. It was like thousands of euros. And I was like, I need to make that. I need that cardigan. I wanted to go in the store and look at it. And the store was closed. And I was just standing there. <laughs> in front of that shop window and looking at that cardigan. That was my dream. Yeah, <laughs> I know people dream about all kinds of things. I dream about crafts. I dream about knitting and crochet. And I actually, I was thinking, how hard can it be? No, it can't be hard. I have my mohair drawer that is full of random balls of mohair. And some of them are quite colorful. I have some pinks there and I think some white and yeah anyways I was thinking what if I just pull all the random single balls of mohair that I have there and try to make it how hard can it be can't be hard what if I just start making granny squares and then piece them together into a card again is that crazy idea and I want it like rather thick and chunky. I would need to hold more hair like three or four strands together probably to get a good volume, to get a good size granny square. Is that crazy? Is that a crazy idea? I, try I had a dream about that cardigan and I think I want it. Wouldn't that be great for spring? Yeah, also over great layering piece, right? I say layering piece a lot. <laughs> um, hmm. Let me know what do you think about my mad idea. But I think I need that in my life. I do. Yeah, but I should probably finish something first. I have a lot of whips there that that also are waiting to be finished. A couple, couple of them are not that far away from, from being done. So I could maybe... I'm still playing with the idea. Yeah, it's, it's, it's rolling in my head. <laughs> not yet starting, but... But that'd be fun. That would be fun, right? Um, yeah. Uh, then, one of my episodes has caused a discussion about... Remember a couple of episodes ago, I talked about me leaning towards designers with similar body type. And there has been a big discussion about it now. In several places, I have seen people talking about it. And that one thing... Just, just returning back to it, I wanted to mention one thing that... what why it probably happens, if it happens at all for you, I don't know, but it happens for me as well, that I lean towards the designers with the same similar proportions that I have. It's not about the size, it's about the probably just body shape, type, how do you call it, like apples and oranges, <laughs> oh, apples, pears, I don't know, what else is there? Yeah, the... the... How do you call that one? <laughs> the... the... This is the, the recording in the morning. Yeah, I <laughs> don't have my thoughts together. Anyways, uh, we were thinking about it that when the designer starts designing it, whatever, like a sweater, they probably try the first prototype on themselves, right? And then they design what kind of looks good on their body and then they grade it to the other sizes. So I think that's what it is, that that first that first knit, that first prototype, when they start working on it, right? Because they don't probably try it on the other people if it's not a big design house. They try it on themselves. <laughs> so that could be the key. That could be the answer to that question. Hmm. Right? Right? Uh, yeah. So what else? <sighs> it's 
so nice to sit down, so unusual to sit down in the morning and just talk to you. But I'm enjoying it very much. Could, could, could this be my regular thing that I record in the mornings instead of afternoons? No rush. We have light. <laughs> I don't need to. I don't need to rush because it's not going anywhere. It's still here. We woke up to a thick fog today, because again the temperatures they keep going into plus, then keep they keep dropping in the minus. And I was at first I thought we have a snowstorm outside, but then I went and I opened the curtain and it was so dense fog. It's a minus again Celsius. We measure here in Celsius and. So dense fog, like you couldn't see the neighbors. It was it was very weird, but then it went away, and now it's a beautiful bright day out there. Uh, yeah. Uh, I I received a very good question from one of you, my lovely viewers, about what do I do? What's the trick of not having pains in your body when you knit a lot? Now, I don't know. Is there really a trick? But I could share what I do. What I do because, yeah, knitting can cause a fair amount of pain. Uh, and it has happened to me as well when I have overdone it. I think the main thing is don't overdo it. If you start to feel uncomfortable, take a break. Or anyway, even before that, before you start to feel uncomfortable, take a break. Do your stretches. I don't know, walk a bit, do something else. Sometimes switching to another project helps. I have noticed that if my hands start hurting from thick needles, I put that project away. Some people say they react to thick, thinner needles. I'm the one that if it's over like four and a half millimeters, my wrists start to feel it. I start to feel it in my wrists. So I just put it aside and pick another project. That's why I have many whips. Um, and then one more thing I have noticed that you get more pain and cramping if you are a tight knitter. If you're a loose knitter, you're relaxed, you just you can keep going. Nothing hurts. But if you're you're if you're very tense already with knitting and you're knitting tightly and pulling, you might get more pain in your joints, I don't know, in the fingers, in the wrists, in elbows sometimes. I sometimes get the pain in my elbow and I'm a very loose knitter. And then, of course, we need a comfortable position, comfortable chair or sofa or whatever feels good to you. Yes, yeah, sometimes, yeah, you need an extra support and just try to be relaxed while knitting. Don't tense it. If you are if you are here and all tense and just knitting and everything, yeah, your neck might hurt. Your arms might hurt. I'm no expert on this. I'm just sharing my, my own experiences that, yeah... Sometimes I like, yeah, I try to intentionally relax when when knitting. That it's not, it's not a battle. It's not a fight. That, and I think being a loose knitter helps not to get the pains. And but still, my back and the neck sometimes feel tense from sitting too long. And then I just get up and do some basic stretches, or I like to stretch out on a roll. If you have um, a soft, I don't know, fitness roll, whatever, exercise roll, not too thick. Or you can just take a towel, roll it up, put it under your back, lie, lay flat on your back with a roll under, and then lift your arms up and just, just give it a good stretch and then relax on it. While that roll is, I like to put it under my shoulder blades because that's where I feel the tension. And then I just... I, I'm just there on that roll flat for a good five minutes and then I get up and I feel like new. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, yeah. I usually don't have like knitting marathons. I don't sit and knit for hours and hours and hours. I sometimes do it between housework. If, if I'm doing something, if I'm cooking, I have my knitting there. Like, yeah, something is frying or boiling. I, yeah, I take breaks. I... My knitting is always next to me. Or sometimes when I'm cleaning, I take a break from cleaning and I do five minutes of knitting. <laughs> and then I put it back and I go back to cleaning. Things like that. But a couple of times I have had a like, full day of knitting when kids have been away somewhere, the grandparents or... Yeah, I have knit for probably five, six hours in a row. And then, then I feel it in my body. Then you need a good stretch after that. Or maybe even a walk. 
yeah, but you can do all sorts of things. Just don't overdo it in moderate. Do it in moderation. Do your stretches. Find a good comfy position and don't knit too tight. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, those are my thoughts on, on that topic. But it's an excellent question. And I think we all could share our tips and tricks in the comments. If you, if you know, yeah, tell me what do you do? What do you do to avoid pains in your body from knitting? Sometimes changing to different needles helps. Uh, I love my uh, square needles and sometimes wooden needles feel nicer. Or again, metal needles. It depends also on the yarn that you're working with. Yeah, if it's a slippery yarn, changing away from metal needles will help a lot not to get tense. Because then you don't need to hold your yarn on those needles. Yeah, because they, they won't escape from a wooden needle, most likely. I have those square needles. They are also good if you have achy joints. They, they, they are much better because you, you don't need to hold... Yeah, your fingers don't roll on a round needle. They, they stay in place there. <laughs> I feel like a wise frog today. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I'm not lecturing you, I'm just sharing my experience, I guess. Experience. I've been knitting for over 30 years. Can you believe that? <laughs> yeah. That that long. On and off, but yeah, that long I've been I've been knitting. A bit less when at the university, I think there I only knit like a few, few things a year, like one or two. Yeah, but then I didn't have time. I was busy studying. But then the rest of the time, I have I have always been knitting, or crocheting. Yeah, it goes it goes in waves. I really hope get back to spinning this weekend. I have a spinning plan. I have a scheduled spinning hour tomorrow. <laughs> Just me, myself and I. My spinning wheel, my little buggy, ladybug and some fabulous uh, wool from uh, people that do knitted yarn. Uh, I have a bat from them. Where do I have it? I have it here, don't I? Oh, oh! look, happens to be here. The bag is not very pretty. But I have this, I have this fabulous, it's fabulous. I have this fabulous wool. Does it have, no, that's just the paper. I don't know the color name. I don't want to, I won't get it back in, will I, if I take it out. Oh. <laughs> mm, it smells divine. It smells sheepy. It's just a carded, carded wool, and I'm planning to spin it into something, into something fabulous. Into something fabulous. I don't know how much is here. I have two of these. It's a lot. It's a lot. Ah, oh, fluffy goodness. I still haven't decided how thick I want to spin it because I don't have a project in my mind. I need to put it on scale and check. If I have enough for a sweater, then I'm not going to spin it too thin. Or should I try thin spin? I don't know. haven't decided yet. I'm not a technical spinner. I just go with the feeling. <laughs> I start spinning and then I, 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 I check what the wool tells me, what it wants to be, what kind of yarn it wants to be. Yeah. If you want technical information about spinning, there are many better places to get that. <laughs> not here. I'm not a technical spinner. This is lovely. This is lovely, and that's what I'm planning Ooh, to spin tomorrow when I have a spinning date with myself. Okay. Is it enough jibber jabber for one day? <laughs> um, yeah. I still need to go to work. Do I? Do I? I, I, yeah, I have a, I have a lot of work to do today. And then we have some evening plans. And then, then we have maybe a pizza night. Pizza and movie night today. Hubby promised to make pizza. We love his pizza. It's very, very good. 
he makes it in our wood stove oven oven kind of thing uh, yes okay <laughs> If you have questions, you can always leave me a comment um, about anything. I try to link all the patterns and everything I talk about down below. And I want to thank you all for spending your time with me here on my YouTube channel in my, in my little crafty corner. I'm wishing you a wonderful weekend ahead and I will see you next time. Hey, Bob.